hello. Today we are taking a look at the spring ecosphere because it just turned two years old. Last year I made a video explaining all the events that happened in the first year. I'm not going to do that again because I would be making the same video twice. So if you haven't seen that video yet or want to see it again, you can, well, you know, do that. Let's go ahead and find out what the spring ecosphere looks like today. Let's focus on the animal life first. It won't be a big surprise to you to hear that there's still a large amount of bladder snails living in the closed ecosystem. They have proven once again just how resilient and strong their species are. I personally think that the cockroaches need to step up their game if they still want to be known as the number one species that will survive everything. But I don't know if that really fits their current agenda. They seem to be more focused on fashion and looks nowadays. Unfortunately I couldn't find too many royalty free pictures of pretty cockroaches. But if you search for pretty cockroaches, you'll find some pretty cockroaches. But uh, bladder snails, they're quite indestructible. This one has an algae beard. This is a very interesting phenomenon. It's called blurry floor because I forgot to stop recording. I've only seen it once or twice before. Very exciting. This premium quality content is why you subscribe to Life in Jars. Now this is actually a lot of fun to watch. No, I'm not talking about the air bubble in the glass. I'm talking about this little ostracod, commonly called sea shrimp, buzzing around in the algae beard of a bladder snail. I always think it's fun to think about the scale of things. For the ostracod, the algae beard is an entire playground, a park. For the snail, it's nothing more than a coat. And us humans, of which I am, as you know, also one, could fit this entire combination up our left nostril. This shot is also a perfect segue into the next subject, ostracods. A perfect segue without having to think too hard about it. Wow! You know what I always say? When life gives you lemons, you have lemons. So, ostracods, seed shrimp, many in this ecosphere, there are. They are very hardy, just like bladder snails. Every closed ecosystem I have that started out with bladder snails and ostracods still has them. The fun thing about ostracods is that they're big enough to easily be seen with the naked eye, but small enough to not be bothered by the confinement of the jar. Now that I think about it, that's actually true for all the animals I've seen in my jars, otherwise I would have taken them out. So why did I say that about the ostracods? Well, I had to say something about them, right? But in all seriousness, Something about these little crustaceans feels different. I don't have the scientific data to back this up, but I'm pretty sure they don't have the brain capacity to realize that they are trapped in a jar. Again, I think that's true for all the animals in these jars. The thing that just baffles me, it gets me every time, is that these ostracods have eaten and pooped and reproduced and have lived their normal lives for many, many generations in a truly closed ecosystem. An ecosystem that hasn't had any interaction with the ecosystem you and I live in for the past two years. Amazing! There's also still planaria in this ecosphere, but not as many as there used to be. Although they might start reproducing like crazy again at some point in the future. Let's talk about plants and algae baby, let's talk about greenery. There's a few different kinds of algae in this jar. There's this type of algae that can be clearly seen on the shells of some of the bladder snails. We also have a bit of a more bushy string algae. And near the bottom, between the roots of the plants, there's a lot of really light green, almost white algae. It has a very small and dense structure. 
It looks a bit crumbly, sandy even. There are some algae growing on the glass as well and some really dense hair algae on this twig. Let's talk about the plants. As you might remember from last year's video, from the two plants I planted in this ecosphere, only the Vedasneria survived. There are some dead leaves and plants, some of which are filled with air pockets. Looking back at the footage I filmed of these plants, I realize that I filmed mostly dead or dying ones. The reason for why that happened is that my shrimp brain, I mean very human brain, thought the dead ones looked interesting and that's why I accidentally filmed a lot of them. I assure you that most of these plants are very healthy and that new ones are growing often. The snails and ostracods love chomping on there. Together with a lot of microbes, the snails and ostracods make sure that the dead plants are properly disposed of and that they don't just fall down and rot, which could be very bad for the water quality. That's a sign of a healthy ecosystem. This beautiful piece shows the border of life and death. It symbolizes the transience of life. If you look closely, you can see little bubbles being formed near the roots of this Velisneria. These are oxygen bubbles. This is called purling. You might recognize it if you have a planted tank. Purling is a phenomenon caused by plants or algae producing more oxygen than can be dissolved in the water. A good sign. Also, don't google purling. You might have noticed that there aren't as many plants and animals in this ecosphere as there were two years ago. Let's talk about that. This ecosphere started out with both Ambulia, Limnophila sessiliflora, and Felisneria. They both had the same niche in this ecosystem, the same job if you will. They both had to convert the carbon dioxide produced by the animals into oxygen for the animals to breathe, through photosynthesis. And they had to get rid of organic waste by growing. The main purpose in life of pretty much all the organisms on earth is to reproduce. Apparently in this ecosystem, the Vesalsneria was more efficient at fulfilling its task, therefore it could quickly reproduce. That means that the Velusneria was direct competition for the Ambulia. The interesting thing about a closed ecosystem, like the spring ecosphere, is that there's a finite amount of resources. Therefore, this ecosystem can only support so many plants. At first, the amount of Velusneria and Ambulia both grew quickly, but at some point, the limit of the amount of plants that could live in the ecosystem was reached. Because at least at that time, the Velisneria were more efficient at doing what they were supposed to do, they could reproduce easier. So when a plant died, whether it was an Ambulia or a Velisneria, it was more likely to be replaced with a Velisneria. And that is how eventually the Ambulia disappeared. The Velisneria was better suited to live in the ecosphere, because it was more efficient at fulfilling its niche. In a way, the ecosystem traded biodiversity for efficiency. I hope you could follow what I just said and that you have a little bit of an understanding of why the biodiversity went down. When this ecosphere just started, there were a lot of different animals living in the jar. Some of them were larvae, and once they turned into adult insects, they couldn't reproduce, so no new larvae were born, and since the ecosphere is closed, they'd never return. Apart from that, all the animals in this ecosystem went through a similar process of selection based on efficiency like the plants. Eventually, or I should say right now, three larger animals are left. The bladder snails, planaria and seed shrimp. I must say that I'm quite surprised that the aquatic isopods disappeared. I did not expect that. With each step of the evolution of this ecosystem, it gets less biodiverse, but also more stable. When you make an ecosphere, you create a new ecosystem. That ecosystem needs time to settle, it needs time to get balanced and stable. This can result in big fluctuations in for example the amount of algae, 
or the number of individuals of one species of animal. At some point, those fluctuations get smaller and smaller as the ecosystem becomes more stable and balanced. The spring ecosphere has had clear water and glass for a long time now and that's not likely to change anytime soon because the ecosystem won't allow for an algae bloom to happen right now. Somewhere down the road, a point will be reached where nothing will drastically change anymore for a long time because the ecosystem has reached a stable state. From that point on, it should theoretically be able to live on for a long time to come. There is one thing I still wanted to share with you and it's pretty exciting. I discovered a new animal in the jar. It's really tiny, so to film it I tried digitally zooming, which is always a mistake, and using a macro lens, but it was still difficult to see. So I used a scope to see it better. No, this is not a part of the moon filmed through a telescope, but rather water droplets on glass filmed through a microscope. Now I don't know too much about this animal, but it appears to be some sort of very small water mite or other aquatic arachnid. It's really quite surprising to see an animal in this ecosphere that I haven't seen before in the past two years. So I'll keep an eye out and see if I can find more. So that's what the spring ecosphere looks like after two years. I would like to thank Drea, Christopher Lee, Moes, Ganymede907, Tyler P and Smith for their generous support on Patreon. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. If you don't want to miss out on any future updates and you want to see other projects and you haven't already, well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching.